Hello, I'm Brett Dixon. I'm the business manager for Esri's Asia Pacific Defence and Intelligence team. Um, joining me today will be Craig Pittman, who is our solution engineer. Uh, we're presenting Arctis for the military, which is Esri's national security, defence, intelligence uh, solution, and we'll be running through a few demonstrations of that product. So the Arctis military solution addresses some key issues in terms of supporting defence and intelligence customers. I'll just name them in three key points. Information fusion, dynamic information integration, complex spatial analysis in support of operations, and most importantly for our users in the field is actually getting that information into intelligence out so they can use it in support of operations. So it's getting actionable intelligence out to users in the field in as they need it, when they need it. We're going to demonstrate those concepts by providing a very short uh, uh, demonstration based on a scenario of a suspect vessel off the coast of Australia and how we might use GIS and the ArcGIS platform to actually plan that operation and interdict that vessel. What we're going to do first is with uh, Craig acting as an intelligence analyst is creating a picture of the environment by fusing authoritative foundation data together as well as operational information. So let's have a look at information integration. So the scenario is based on an intelligence analyst operating within a headquarters environment, the first step that they'll take in the process is to build a picture of the battle space or the environment in which they're looking at operating. So first of all we need to ingest authoritative foundation information. And because this is an operation that is to undertaken over both land and sea, we need to have an, a way in which we can fuse topographic information with authoritative maritime information as well. So you can see here that Craig is actually adding within a web browser authoritative foundation maritime information. This is being drawn directly from a production data set and ingested into a web browser. And you can see from the, as we zoom in that the symbology is being applied uh, uh, appropriately as we zoom into appropriate scales. And you can also see from the web browser that we've automatically achieved this dynamic integration of topographic information and maritime information. We can also add in operational based information, be it historical inf uh, data based on uh, near real time shipping track feeds uh, in our area of operations, so AIS. And also we're able to add in historical data as well. So if we have piracy data or criminal activity information for this particular area, we can also add that to our base map. So what Craig's shown, within a headquarters environment, within a web browser, a non-GIS expert can fuse authoritative foundation information and operational data. The second concept we'd like to look at is how GIS can support uh, complex predictive analysis. So taking our vessel which is off the coast of Australia, we'll look at ways in which we can determine based on time, distance travelled and the modus operandi of, of our enemy, how we can actually predict where that vessel will be over a course of period of time. So now our analyst has access to authoritative foundation information and operational information we can commence our analysis. We've identified a suspect vessel off the coast of Australia, a few hundred miles off the east coast of Australia there, highlighted in green and we can start to do some predictive analysis based on environmental constraints and also our understanding of their modus operandi, where we predict they're going to land on the Australian coast. So first of all we identify uh, environmental obstacles, be it the Great Barrier Reef, shipping lanes and the, and the suspect vessel avoiding that. And then we start to do predictive analysis based on distance. So within a particular time frame we expect this vessel to be operating at a particular distance. We can also extend that by saying we know this ship is heading in a particular direction, so a 90% probability it's heading to, it's going to maintain that course and land on the Australian coast within this defined area. So by combining all of this analysis, we can actually start to refine where we can uh, deploy our search and interdiction assets. So you can see there by the polygons in green, we've actually reduced the size of the ocean to a very small area of where we can actually start to deploy our assets in terms of interdict interdicting that um, suspect vessel. So then we can overlay our operational information, the location of Australian bases, and also start to look at the range of particular assets, including Black Hawk helicopters or uh, FA-18 attack air, uh, fighter attack aircraft, in terms of how we can deploy and search and interdict that vessel. So now that we've completed that analysis, it's no good having it locked up on someone's desktop. It's important that we get that information out to people who are planning an operation who are actually going to conduct the interdiction mission. So what we'd like to demonstrate now is how we take that intelligence analysis and get it out to guys in the field. Now that the analyst has completed their geospatial intelligence uh, activities, it's important that rather than have that information
information locked up on a desktop. We actually get it out to the men and the women within a headquarters environment or out in the field who are actually conducting these operations. So the ArcGIS platform and ArcGIS for the military provides a number of solutions to get that information out. You can see here that it's provided by a portal for ArcGIS in a web browser environment, but also getting the results of that intelligence activity out onto mobile devices so it can be used to support planning and also the conduct conducting the mission out in the field.